Today we're going to be discussing how to mount an electric on-off actuator to a D9 valve. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure the actuator and valve are in the same position when mounting them. So this the valve is in the open position. We're going to close the valve, remove the manual stop for the manual lever. We're going to install the star drive insert. and then we're gonna mount the actuator. And this actuator is gonna take M12 bolts. Okay, then we're going to remove the lid. So you're going to loosen the four lid bolts. It's always easiest if you take out one of the conduit plugs to release the air out of it. And then the lid will come off. All right, this actuator is 110, so we have a switch, 110 volt switch box. So to actually wire the actuator to power it, 12 is going to be your clockwise or your closed position. 11 will be your counterclockwise or your open position, and five will be your neutral. Okay, so now that we have everything mounted together, we're gonna to set the open and close limit switches for the travel stops. So your top switch is your clockwise or your closed for your motor stop. Your second is your auxiliary for your closed. Your third one down is gonna be your open or counterclockwise for your motor stop. And then the fourth one's going to be your auxiliary for your open. So first thing you do is look to see where it's at. So, and you're going to look for like a dirt line on the ball that'll show you how much your seating area is. So that tells you you have you know, roughly 3 sixteenths of an inch of seating area. So that is good on a four inch size valve. If you need to adjust it to achieve the position where you want it, all you do is loosen that, slot it to wherever you want it to be, tighten it back down and then now set your stops. And then when you go to the open position, and then, then you would look and see where it's at, and if you need to adjust it, your third one down, you would loosen it, move it to the desired position, tighten it up to where you want it, and then that's how you adjust your limit switches inside the actuator. So what you're looking for on the open position is the ball being lined up with the body of the valve so there's no ledge there. So one thing you don't want to do is ever stick your hand inside there, obviously. So that's why I'm pointing using the Allen wrench. All right, so now that we have the limit switches set, the next thing we need to do are set the hard stops. So when setting the hard stops, you loosen them up. And you want to run them in. This one's the open, and the valve's sitting in the open position, so you're going to run this in until it stops. After it stops, you back it off between two and three turns. I usually do two and a half. It's critical to back them off. If not, it's going to run up on the hard stops, and it's going to hit your torque switches. And it won't be, it will not stop on your, the limit switches will be actually torquing out on you, which could cause your fault if you're reading faults. And then you'd lock that back down. Then you're going to drive the actuator to the clockwise or closed position. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so now the valve's in the closed position. Now you're gonna adjust the stop bolt in the same way. You're gonna run it all the way until it touches, and then you're gonna back it off about two and a half turns. And 
and then you're gonna lock it down. Okay, so one other feature we're gonna talk about is the manual override. So to engage your manual override, you pull the lever back, it'll lock in, you can turn it open or you can turn it closed, whichever you want. The only way to disengage this lever is to make motor movement. So once you power the actuator and the motor spins, the lever automatically disengage. You don't wanna ever force this lever. 